And this is not about primary politics. We're not on the air because the intramural Republican primary in Pennsylvania captures our attention as the most important story today. This is about the ascending power of a post-Trump GOP that is against democracy, that is against the free and fair results of an election. Those are the people that are winning. And, and to your point about Democrats wanting to see President Joe Biden forcefully defend the democracy, if not just the, the Democratic candidates running against these folks, what is the, is the White House? It seems like that is a message that this president would be willing to take to the country. Yeah, and he has before. We've heard from him in his first summer in office, go to the Con National Constitution Center in Philadelphia and, and speak powerfully about the need to protect voting rights. We recall in January, he traveled to Atlanta, again making a renewed push uh, for federal legislation to protect the vote. Of course, those efforts didn't go anywhere. Uh, and that's the fear here from Democrats and from this White House, is there's only so much he can do. Uh, and there is a sense of real powerlessness uh, with the, the margins in the House slim, the Senate's 50-50, filibuster not going anywhere. So there's not going to be federal legislation to do this. So therefore, all he really has is the sound of his own voice, the power of the bully pulpit. Certainly, that's a banner the president has, has shown that he will carry. Uh, but there are Democrats who are frustrated he's not doing it more. They want to see him back out there. Uh, but as I've reported in the last few days, this is a White House that is, that is sharpening its attacks. They feel like the time for bipartisanship in many ways is over. They've made good faith efforts. They've had some successes, infrastructure in particular, but they're dealing with a Republican Party that one senior aide here says they don't want to play ball. They don't want to deal with us. So we're going to make this about contrast. We're going to tell them, tell the country how different we are from them. We've seen President Biden go after Senator Rick Scott in particular by name uh, and his tax plan, though he hasn't wanted to name yet those who are espousing the racist uh, replacement theory uh, that fueled the shooter over the weekend, that could change too. Certainly, this is a president who understands what's at stake, the very democracy. And I am told we're going to be hearing far more from him about this in the weeks and months ahead. A.B. Stoddard, you've counseled Democrats to take this message about the democracy. It's something Liz Cheney talks about in her role, both as vice chair of the 1-6 select committee, and frankly, in, in, in all of her public appearances, as she's being challenged now um, with the backing of Kevin McCarthy for telling the truth about 1-6. The, the, the Mastriano point is one that Mastriano makes better than any of us. Let, let me show you his take on elections. I don't even know how this happened in America. We, we could send 50 years ago, you know, men to, to the moon, but we can't have a safe, secure election in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. What's going on here? It's got to be by design. The resolution is going to say we're going to take our power back. We're going to seat the electors. Now, obviously, we're going we're to need the support of the leadership in the House and Senate. Uh, we're, we're getting there on that. But we need to act like hold, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I think we got some breaking news here. You're saying you're going to get a joint resolution to actually go forward, and, and the Republicans control the House and the Senate, to go forward to, to basically take the power back from the Secretary of State and put it in the state legislature to put forward the electors? That is exactly what we're going to do. Our governor comes out, says no fraud, nothing to see here. Our Secretary of State and our Attorney General picked Biden as a winner before one vote was counted. So from the get-go, there was a problem. So maybe none of that was true. Um, the vote there was recounted. Um, 16 lawsuits brought by Rudy Giuliani, who actually located himself in Pennsylvania, lucky Pennsylvanians, along with his cabal for a while. They went before judge after judge after judge. They could not prove these allegations that Mastriano has now ridden to victory in the state. How do you fight? Because it's easy for us to say it. It's probably harder to do on the ground. How do you fight the disinformation that has gripped the Republican Party and those riding it to victory last night? Well, that'll be a challenge as it has been since um, the early morning hours after the election in 2020 when Donald Trump tried to tell everyone he had won and it was being stolen by fake votes that they were finding in, you know, special boxes and suitcases and that 
it was all a hoax. Josh Shapiro, who's running to be the Democratic, he's the Democratic nominee for governor, um, was helping as attorney general prosecute these crazy cases. Republicans and Giuliani lost and will be a very effective messenger fighting against the disinformation. But what you, those clips you played, the things Mastriano has said, he is a dream candidate for Donald Trump. Um, Lou Barletta, the former congressman, um, as Jonathan points out, could not secure the endorsement of uh, former President Trump because he wasn't a big liar the way that Mastriano is sort of like the chief big liar of the big lies. He has served, been served a subpoena by January 6th committee. He took six busloads of um, truthers to, to the January 6th rally. He tried to steal the 2020 election. He intends to steal the 2024 election. Democrats might want to hear from Joe Biden, the president, on this. I think we want to hear from Republican candidates across the country about whether or not they're supporting Doug Mastriano. The Republican mm. Governors Association has their panties in a bunch about this. They don't know what to say yet. There's reporting from Politico, from Jonathan's colleagues, that um, leaders in the Republican Party in Pennsylvania and key donors are going to back Josh Shapiro, the Democrat, because Mastriano is so crazy, he's going to be a drag down ballot for Oz or McCormick, whoever becomes the Senate nominee mm -hmm. and potentially some members of Congress. Um, so I, I'm really looking to see what the Republican Party says. What does Mitch McConnell say? In the days and weeks and months to come, we will learn who's going to back this big liar of all big liars. And it's going to cost the party. Um, I mean, you're such a nut that you're going to drag Dr. Oz is sort of the, the, the headline in, in all that. Um, I, I want to share with you, Jake Sherman, something that, that our friends at the Bulwark write today. Um, remember how Mitch McConnell put it, even after stating clearly and definitely that Trump was morally responsible for January 6th, quote, the Democrats are going to take care of the son of a bitch for us. And like all Republicans before him, McConnell was wrong. They didn't because Republicans couldn't bring themselves to side with the Democrats for one vote on the basic issue of protecting our democracy. Now, Trump is all but guaranteed to be the 2024 Republican nominee. Republicans are still feeling cheeky about how Shapiro will win this in a walk, that Shapiro will take care of the son of a bitch for us. Republicans are still willing to bet our democracy on someone else cleaning their own house for them. I know you're reporting sort of constantly details the, the view from inside these rooms that McCarthy gets a standing ovation, I guess, for saying these things, but not acting on them, that Trump was responsible for January 6th and had to go. But because he didn't act on them, he re retained the support of his caucus. Um, in, in this case, if Democrats are able to do what Jonathan is reporting, they would like, like the president and, and the party to do. And if if Mastriano does prove a drag on the ticket, what is the view from inside, not what they will do, because you've made clear, and I, I think you've been proven right, they will do nothing, but how did they feel about an insurrectionist winning the nomination? Well, let's review a couple data points here, Nicole. Number one, um, I, I think on, on the Bulwark's point, I couldn't caught who wrote, I, I didn't catch who, who wrote that piece, but I, I actually think, and I'm in the minority here perhaps, I actually think the January 6th committee, and this is um, based on reporting conversations that I've had, um, I, I think it's going to be quite damning and quite damaging to Trump. Um, I, I think that it's going to be um, far more cogent and coherent than most people think because we've seen congressional investigations in the past get in the way of themselves. Um, there's just a million examples. Probably the Mueller report is is the best example of that. It was it was uh, we don't have to go over all of that again. Um, but I think the January 6th committee is going when they do their report and they do their hearings, it's going to be quite damaging for the Republican Party and specifically for the Trump administration. That's number one. Number two, if you look what we reported this morning, um, Republicans are not only sitting pretty at the moment, they're, they're sitting probably prettier politically than they've sat in 12 years. And I'd say right now, the Republican Party, the same Republican Party that we've just talked about, um, that has not lifted a finger against Trump, um, is up eight points in the generic ballot in battleground states. That means that the average unnamed Republican is beating the the unnamed Democrat in crucial districts by eight points. Now, why is that such a big deal? On its face, eight points is a lot. But when you consider it, the Democrats have a built-in 
four point advantage on the generic ballot. Um, it, it means that Republicans are not only winning right now in the House, which is the base of the Trump support, but they're winning uh, overwhelmingly. So their theory of the case, let's not talk about Trump. Let's not talk about January 6th. Let's talk about inflation. Let's talk about all of these dynamics that are playing out in the economy. It's being proven right. So they're being rewarded for their silence on Trump and on January 6th. And I think that's just important to internalize for people because that shows that this kind of misbehavior is is being rewarded, and it is misbehavior because I, I will say January six was a, was a, a violent attack insurrection on the Capitol for which nobody really, besides the the folks outside the Capitol, nobody has truly been held responsible. So um, now to John's point, I. I I, 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 I trust John's reporting a thousand percent, and I think it makes sense that the president would take a sharper line against people who uh, promote racist theories and things of that nature. I, I don't know. I, I'm not saying it won't have an impact. I have no idea what that impact would be. I, I, one colleague on Capitol Hill, a reporter, said to me today, if Democrats want to change the message in this election uh, to whatever they want to change it to, they need to start. <laughs> right. They need to start today, because at this point, with the data that we have, this is DCCC internal polling and Republican inter internal polling. Democrats are getting absolutely trounced in the districts that matter most to retaining or limiting their losses in the House. I mean, we look like based on this polling that we reported this morning, we look like we're shaping up to have a night with Republicans uh, taking dozens of seats in the House of Representatives. Nonwithstanding, this is again two years after the most significant attack on our democracy, on our capital, that was undoubtedly, I don't care what people say on Twitter or whatever, it was undoubtedly um, uh, encouraged by the President of the United States who said, let's march to the Capitol, and then people marched to the Capitol.